I'm Dr. Greg Winteregg, CEO of the Private Dentist Alliance. I want to talk to all of you students out there today who are wondering what your future is going to be like as a career in dentistry, as an assistant, as a hygienist, as a dentist, where is this profession going with the rapid increase of the DSO movement? I'm here to tell you the PDA is going to help you and I want you to become a member today. It is free. Now, why should you become a member? You're going to get weekly video updates from me and you're going to get regular updates of our newsletters from the Alliance on exactly what is happening and how we are going to help preserve and protect the private practice of dentistry. Now to me, the most important advantage is you are going to get access to our job board. What is that? Our private practicing members all have access to our PDA job board, which means if they have an opening in their private practice of assistant, hygienist, doctor, front office staff, they're going to be able to post it. And you're going to be able to check up regularly. And as our membership grows, we're going to be covering larger and larger territories across the United States. If you are looking for a job in any position in the office of a private practice, you need to become a student member today. It is free. Go to www.privatedental.org and become a student member today. You're going to love your benefits. Do it now. What is up, guys? It's your boy, Matt Havis, back at it again with the Dental Student Advice Podcast. And today we have one crazy interview for you. We had Dr. Bill Dorfman, the celebrity cosmetic dentist out in California on the podcast. And he's just such an incredible human being. He gave us full insight on what it's like being a dentist in Hollywood, um, how to be a successful dentist in general, because everyone knows Dr. Bill Dorfman. He has been on multiple TV shows, Larry King Live, Doctors, Oprah. He's done all these shows. He, he's had an illustrious career. So he decided to sit down with us and give us some insight on how to formulate a career like he has had, how to have success in dentistry and how to have success in life in general. So as he sits down with us today, he discusses his Leap Foundation that he has created. He discussed Discus Dental, which he also created, and what it means to be a part of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. As always, remember, message us on Instagram at dental.student.vibes. Let us know what you think and what we can do to make this the best podcast we can for you. As always, stay safe and vibe on. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Student Vibes podcast. I'm Seth. We have George, Anthony, Matt, Cole, and our very special guest, Dr. Bill Dorfman. Dr. Dorfman, how are you today? I am excellent as always. I love it. So before we get started, Anthony is going to give a little background on Dr. Bill. Dr. Bill is the man that has done everything. So take it away, Anthony. Okay. Celebrity cosmetic dentist Dr. Bill Dorfman has been practicing for over 30 years in the Beverly Hills area and has had a career unparalleled to any other dentist in history. He has transformed the smiles of celebrities such as Katy Perry, Usher, Anthony Hopkins, Fergie, Hugh Jackman, Michael Strahan, Jessica Simpson, Mark Wahlberg, and Eva Longoria, among many others. Dr. Bill was the only dentist featured on ABC's hit show, Extreme Makeover, and is currently a recurring guest co-host on the CBS Emmy-awarded daytime talk show, The Doctors. Referred to as the Michael Jordan of Dentistry, he has also appeared on numerous TV shows, including Larry King Live, Oprah, Access Hollywood, E! Extra, and Entertainment Tonight. As founder of the Discus Dental, one of the world's leading dental companies, he helped lead the company from its inception to more than $1.3 billion in sales, primarily with award-winning tooth whitening products such as Zoom and Bright Smile. Dr. Bill has received 20 Lifetime Achievement Awards, two Guinness Book of World Records, is a New York Times bestselling author, and recently was the first dentist ever knighted by the Royal Order of Constantine. As a passionate philanthropist, together with country singer Garth Brooks and the Crown Council of Dentists, he has helped raise more than 44 million for children's charities. Dr. Bill is also the founder of the nonprofit LEAP Foundation. LEAP is a week-long motivational slash leadership program taught at UCLA 
every summer to more than 400 students between the ages of 15 to 25 and over. More than just a dentist, Dr. Bill Dorfman is an author, entrepreneur, philanthropist, TV personality, health and fitness enthusiast, proud father of three daughters, and much more. Yes, sir. Dr. Bill, how do you do all of that? I have a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I, I mean, I think that, you know, people often ask me, you know, how can you do what you do? And I think one of the best skills that I was ever able to learn was really how to ask for help and have people that you can really delegate to do different things. For instance, I have three women that run my life. Sinet runs my office. She's amazing. I, I don't know a better dental office manager in the world. Nicole runs my personal life. Also amazing. Like she does everything from booking flights to paying taxes to answering 90% of my emails to on and on and on. And then my ex-wife Evelyn runs my family stuff. And between the three of them, like I just need to show up once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So Dr. Bill, I know that you just finished with the Leap Foundation. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about that? I know you run it at UCLA every summer. Yeah, you know, this was a huge pivot for us. Um, this is a program we've done for the last 12 years. This would be our 13th year. Ironically, COVID hit and, you know, lucky 13, it became a virtual program this year. Typically, we have about 450 students from all over the world attend a week-long program where we teach them skills to become successful in life. And we do that by bringing in amazing mentors, Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Hopkins, Eva Longoria, Michael Strahan, Apollo Ono. Um, uh, I mean, on and on and on and on. This year, we brought Apollo back again. We had Eva Longoria back again. We had Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. We had Taylor Zachar Perez. His career literally exploded the day after Leap. Not because of Leap, but because he's on Netflix's number one new show called The Kissing Booth. And, and his career, he, he went from having 30,000 followers to something like 3 million followers overnight. It's crazy. But he came and spent time with us. Um, we had the guy who launched the Dollar Shave Club this year. We, I mean, we had great, great speakers. Brent Pendevik, he launched over 300 TV shows in his career. Um, but basically what we do at LEAP is we teach students skills to be successful in life. And everything from how to interview for a, for a job, how to write a resume, to things like appreciation and health and fitness and um, networking. I mean, it, it's a really robust program. And we've been putting this on at UCLA and for us to all of a sudden have to do it, you know, virtually was not easy. Um, there are no platforms out there that are really as adept as we needed to, to do what we wanted. So we created our own and basically 90% of the content was delivered through a webinar where you can give really, really high quality, great graphics and all that. And then we use Zoom which by the way, I invented. Okay, not video conferencing, but I did invent Zoom. Um, we use Zoom for small breakout groups. So the kids still got the opportunity to, to break out. So this was the, um, the program for this year. Next year, it will be July 18th to the 24th. Um, if you want information about LEAP, you can go to our website, www.leap foundation.com it's typically for students age 15 to 25 i will forever going forward make this a hybrid program it was phenomenal we had over a thousand kids participate this year typically we get about 450 so going forward we're going to have the live program but then we'll broadcast everything we're doing so we can pick up, up an audience of students that can't come to LA or, or maybe, you know, they, they just couldn't afford to come to a live program like that. 
So it, it's pretty exciting. And I'll tell you something about LEAP. We teach appreciation. There's no other program in the world that teaches appreciation. By the way, there's no other program in the world that can get Kathy Bates and Fergie and, you know, Katy Perry said she'll come when she's not pregnant. I mean, none. There's no program that does that. But there's also no other program that teaches appreciation, you know? And one of the things we do is we have the kids write what are called I appreciate notes. They get a little stack. It says, I appreciate, and then it's blank, and then you write what for. And typically, I'll say, you know, I appreciate Mark Wahlberg for coming and spending time with us or whatever. Last year, not, le not this COVID year, but last year with 400 kids in the program, I got 400 I appreciate notes. And 99% of them say, hey, Dr. Bill, I appreciate you and the LEAP team because LEAP changed my life life. And I know it did. Now I say 99%. The reason is because 1% said, hey, Dr. Bill, LEAP saved my life. And I know it did. These kids come into the program. They've got no support. They've got no family. They've got no one in their corner. And I think one of the things that makes LEAP so effective is that we put these kids in groups and we encourage them to stay in them even when LEAP is done. And you know, if you talk to my kids that go to LEAP, most of them will tell you that their best friends, the friends that they keep for their life, are friends that they met at LEAP. The, the guy who's running the program, Charlie Gallagher, came to LEAP when he was 16. He's now 27. He's been running LEAP for the last four years. He's our executive director. And he will tell you, his closest friends in life are all people he met at LEAP. And especially with the way our society is and the pressure that kids grow up with and all, it's really great to have a solid group of people in your corner. And, and LEAP provides that, you know? And it, it's, it's a pretty powerful thing. And um, I was asked to be a mentor in the program for many, many years. And then the founder passed away. He was in his mid 80s. I thought, you know, this program can't die just because he did. So we brought it back as a nonprofit. We'll be in our 14th year next year. And, uh, you know, I hope that some of your listeners may have, you know, brothers or sisters or friends that can attend. That's incredible. And Dr. Bill, I mean, the, the fact that you do so much philanthropy in your mm -hmm. life, I think that you are probably one of the biggest dental philanthropists or just philanthropists, period in the world and definitely one of the most incredible that we've talked to. Um, so moving right along, I know Anthony has a question that he's, he's really wanting to uh, ask you. So go ahead. Yeah, totally. I just wanted to say real quick, I just think it's great what you're doing. You're, you're doing a well-rounded in individual and teaching them from all different angles. So everyone, please go check out the Leap Foundation to our listeners. But I know you've been on a lot of TV shows, Extreme Makeover, The Doctors, Larry King Live, E! I just wanted to talk to you about what's it like being on these shows, being around all these celebrities. Uh, the one I'm personally interested in is Michael Strahan because I'm a Giants fan and, you know, he has one of the more uh, recognizable smiles in America. So I really just wanted to ask you what that's like, you know, dealing with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I have to tell you a funny Michael Strahan story. Okay. So he came in the first time and, um, this was like before his career exploded, right? So this is like right at the beginning. And he sits down and I'm like, I'm like, dude, let's close that gap. He's like, no, doc, I'm famous for it. I'm like, really? He's like, no, no, you can't close the gap. So we had this long discussion about it. I'm like, okay, you can keep the gap. But it's like the very first thing I said, let's close the gap. Uh, he's such a great guy. You know, here's the thing about TV. This was not in my cards. There's two things that I preach at LEAP. Number one, don't wait for opportunities in life, make them. No offense. If I meet another millennial who tells me they're waiting for the universe to do something, I'm gonna pull my hair out. Like the universe doesn't care about you, okay? The universe is really busy with COVID right now. You want something to happen, make it happen. Number two, when you do get an opportunity in life, don't take it, master it. 
and there's a big difference. Listen, I was not made for TV. I really think I was made to be a dentist. But when ABC gave me the opportunity to be on, for the first time ever, dentistry was on prime time TV in a really positive way. Not like Marathon Man or Little Shop of Horrors or something bad, but like this is like dentistry at its best. I watched the first few episodes and I was appalled at how horrible I was. Like, I'm lucky they didn't fire me. I stunk on TV. But instead of sitting there thinking, oh man, I'm just bad, I kicked myself in the butt. I took acting classes, hosting classes, teleprompting classes. I worked with a media trainer who beat me up. Like she literally would hit me in the head if I turned my head the wrong way. I mean, she was brutal. But you know what? I practice and I practice and I practice and I practice. And it's just like, you know, when you cut that first crown prep and it takes you 17 hours, I can do a crown prep now in six minutes, flat. I can prep 20 teeth, 10 uppers and 10 lowers in less than two hours and take impressions. And your mouth just dropped. I mean, it's true, it happens, you know? When I first started doing TV, I stunk, but I knew that there was an opportunity. And instead of just accepting that I was gonna be bad, I did something about it, right? And so when I started doing all these talk shows, I worked with a media trainer. See, here's what happens when you do a talk show, like when you do The Tonight Show or you do Rosie or you do Ellen, they bring you in a room and a producer sits there and they interview you, right? And they talk to you for about an hour and then they pick out stuff that they like. And then when you go live on air, they basically ask you questions that they already know the answers to because those are things they feel their audience is going to like. Makes sense, right? Totally. Oprah doesn't do that. When Oprah has you on, she and Larry King, she wants your raw, unfiltered answer. When I went on Oprah, it was right at the inception of Extreme Makeover. And it was kind of a big deal, Extreme Makeover. We were one of the first reality shows. We had huge rain. You know, we would get like 20, 30 million people watching the show. You don't get those numbers anymore. Big hit TV shows today will get two or three million viewers. Mm -hmm. You know, but we didn't have competition. We didn't have all the stuff on cable. So when I went on Oprah, she said, Dr. Bill, your career is unlike any dentist. I've ever, no, any dentist in the world. She goes, what inspires you to think outside the box? That was not a common phrase yet, think outside the box. It was actually, hearing it from Oprah was the first time I heard it. And I just looked at her and said, what box? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that pretty much defines my whole life, you know? When people tell me I can't do something, that inspires me to do it. You know, I don't let people tell me how to run my life or what to do. I just, I just do what I feel in my gut is the right thing to do. And one of the things I love to tell students, and I'll tell it to you guys, you can right now, from this second on in your life, Decide you will never fail at anything. Because I don't. I never fail, ever. If I do something and it doesn't come out the way I want it to, that's not failure. That's practice. Then you do it again and again and again and again if you need to. You really only fail when you quit. So if you don't quit, you'll never fail. And sometimes you actually need that practice to succeed. You know, not everything just comes. You sometimes really need to go through, you know, the process of practicing, not failing, but practicing until you can succeed at something. So if you're really bound and determined to do something, do it and don't give up. That's excellent advice. I love that. Yeah. We need to... Uh... Man, we need to get you on for a couple more episodes here. <laughs> so then, Dr. Bill, I've got a, a follow-up to that. So then you said, you know, you've never had any real failures because everything has just been practiced to perfecting your craft. 
So then can you give us, you know, we love the raw and the unfiltered. Can you give us an example of a, you know, maybe a low point or a time that you you face some adversity that you use that mantra to push you forward and then become that true master of your craft? I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of take this from a little bit different angle. Okay. Because I had a really, really, really low point in my life when like three horrible things all happened at once. And this isn't a like practice, you know, kind of thing. This is a like I'm just going to go off. I'm like, there are going to be times in your life when things just aren't working the way you want. And what I want to tell you guys, and especially because you're all men, is asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. And we don't do it. You know how many men die every year from heart attacks because they don't want to admit that they're having one? It's crazy. You know, we're, we go into de de denial and, and, and we just refuse to ask for help. There was a period in my life when three really, really catastrophic things all happened at one time that were really bad. You know, my, my, um, my wife decided we were getting divorced, forgot to tell me. <laughs> I'm sitting in the practice one day and I get a phone call from TMZ asking me if I'd like to come in on a divorce. I'm like, what do you mean my divorce? I didn't know. I had no idea. On top of that, we were in the middle of selling Discus Dental and it was like the 11th hour. All we needed was one last signature and the guy that was supposed to do that didn't do it. And so the whole deal fell apart. And one of my very close family members was literally on their deathbed. And I went into work and I did what's called an all hands on deck meeting. And I called everybody in, I had 30 employees. And I said, listen, you guys know bits and pieces, but let me tell you what's going on in my life. And I told them, honestly, unfiltered and as transparent as I could be, I told them what was going on. And I said, listen, I am not okay. I'm not gonna pretend to be okay, I'm not okay. And everybody says, well, why are you here? Why are you at work? What am I going to do, sit home and cry? That's not going to help. I feel better helping people. That's my sweet spot. I want to come and just engage in my patients' lives and take care of them because I know that that makes me healthy and makes me feel good. So that's what I'm going to do. And when patients come in and they say, hey, doc, how are you? I'm going to look them right in the face and lie and say I'm fine. Because I can't tell them and then work on them. Like, I can't share that with everybody. So I'm telling you guys, I'm not okay. There's nothing in my life that's okay right now. But I'm going to come here and I'm going to commit myself to helping everybody in my practice, taking care of my patients, because I know I can do that. And I know that that makes me feel good about me. <laughs> And I need that right now. And I just need you guys to CYA. You know what CYA is? It's a legal term. Cover your ass. Yeah. I need you guys to cover my ass. I need you guys to back me up and support me and just be here. And you know, with time, everything passes. And it did, you know. Um, you know, the divorce happened. You know, it is what it is. Um, fortunately, my family member recovered and, and is fine today. And three years later, we were able to revamp things and, and sell the company. And ironically, one of the things we teach at LEAP is what we call the 10 culture. You got to walk like a 10, talk like a 10, act like a 10, and surround yourself with other 10s. Well, the crazy thing is we ended up selling Discus Dental on 10, 10, 10 at 10 a.m. So I always keep this 10 with me. To remind me that's crazy there you go it was meant to be absolutely so dr bill you you talked about highs and lows and all of us being dental students there's a lot of highs and lows you know it's definitely a stressful time um probably not as stressful as those times you were just talking about but 
Um, so what could you tell a dental student that's uh, either just starting or just about to graduate on just kind of advice, how to, how to keep going and maybe something that you could um, kind of, you know, tell them, hey, hey, here's what I would do differently during dental school or, you know, right when they're about to start practicing. Okay, first of all, perspective is huge. You need to put things in perspective. You know, you fail a test, big deal. They're not gonna kick you out of dental school for it. You know what I mean? I mean, stuff happens. So literally, put things in perspective. I never told this story and I don't even know why it popped in my head, but I'm gonna tell it right now. I have a cousin who's not the sharpest tool in the shed <laughs> by a long shot. And he was a year older than me. And every time I got to a point where I thought, man, I can't do that. But he did it. And I know I'm so much more capable than him. And then I would just push through it and do it. I can tell you that as a dental student, there are students in your class that are a lot less sharp than you and they're gonna graduate, right? And your school's not gonna like what I'm gonna say right now, but this is true and I'm not like, you know, sugarcoating anything. Your patients have no freaking idea if you graduate number one in your class or number 10 or number 50 or number 300. They'll never know. Don't sweat it. Just get out of school. <laughs> and then when you become a dentist, take great care of your patients because that's what they're going to know. You know the old saying, they don't know how, they don't care how much you know, they know how much you care. It's true. I'm going to tell you something. I, I can't show you on my phone. Every day when I get out of work, the first thing, as I sit in my car, my phone dings and I get a text message from Sunette. Sunette's my office manager, like the incredible office manager. And you know what's in that text message? That. What do you think? The numbers for the day? <laughs> Take a guess. The yeah. numbers for the day? I'm going to tell you something. I have not looked at the numbers for my practice for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I mean, honestly, I know we're cranking. I know we're busy. You know, I mean, I know I practice dentistry in a little bit different way because since I sold my company at Discus, for me, dentistry is really more just for fun. Like, I don't need to make a living doing dentistry. I love doing dentistry, so I just do it. So I'm different. I know it. And, and it, it, that's weird for some people, but no, I don't even look at the numbers. Guess what's in the text message? Stuff that patients talked about or said about Pati you. Patient numbers that you text them? <laughs> yep. She lists all the patients I saw that day with their name and their phone number. So as I'm driving home, I could just call each one and say, how are you? You know? Oh, okay. And I check in with every patient I saw that day. Yeah. That's what's in the text. Pro tips. Yes. Wow. I'm going to tell you a cute story. So a few years ago, this elderly guy comes in. He was like in his early 90s, Joe. Joe had three teeth. That's it. Three lower teeth. I had to take one out. So I took the tooth out, send Joe home. That night, I give him a call. He says, who is it? I said, it's Dr. Bill. He goes, Doc, why are you calling? I said, well, Joe, you know, you came in today and I, I took out your tooth. He goes, you kidding me? I'm like, no. He goes, Doc, last month they took out my kidney and nobody called me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. True story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I can see that you really you really care about helping your patients, and I'm sure like that's that's one of the things that we try and uh, tell our listeners is just you know do the best that you can 
uh, with your patients. And we always talk about uh, case presentation, case acceptance, also just, just showing them the fact that you really care, you know, and that, that's going to be your best bet on helping case acceptance and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The best advice I can give dental students is what we say at LEAP all day long. Copy genius. Awesome. Go find dentists that are really knocking the ball out of the park and shadow them and shadow them and shadow them and shadow them. When I came to Beverly Hills, this was in 1986. None of you were even born, right? You're right. Okay. The last thing they needed was another cosmetic dentist. I had just finished dental school. I did a two year residency in Switzerland. I came back. I found the five most successful cosmetic dentists in Beverly Hills. And I called them up and I asked if I could shadow them. Shadowing wasn't even a thing back then. We didn't even call it shadowing. Can I come and observe? If I had said shadow, they'd be like, huh? <laughs> they wouldn't know. When I went into their office, I didn't do, and over 200 students a year come and shadow me in my practice. By the way, anybody in your room or anybody who listens that wants to come to LA, once COVID is done, I love having students come shadow. You're welcome to come do it. And that's very sincere. It's always fun for me. At any rate, 99% of the students that come and shadow me will come in, they'll follow me in the operatory, they'll go out of the operatory, they'll go home. That's not what I did. When I went and I shadowed these dentists, I came in and I stood at the front desk and I watched them greet the patient. I watched the forms. I took copies of all the forms they had the patients sign and fill out. I followed the patient to the room. I saw how they seated the patient, how they greeted the patient. I saw how they treatment planned the patient, how they explained the treatment, and then how they explained the finances for the patient and how they would pay for the treatment. Then I watched them do the dentistry, and then I watched them take the patient to the front desk and check them out and collect the payment. Like, I watched everything. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I sat there like a sponge, and I took all the best parts of these five practices and I brought them into my practice and made my practice even better. Yeah. Within two years, I had a busier practice than any dentist in Beverly Hills. Why? One, I copied genius. Two, I copied genius. Three, I copied genius. And it didn't just stop in LA. One of my Mentors was one of the most amazing men I've ever met, Jeff Golub Evans in New York. And I went and I shadowed him. And Jeff was king of media. He was on every magazine and, every, and he taught me how to work with a publicist. And I hired a publicist and I made my practice famous. If ever somebody were going to write an article about a cosmetic dentist, I wanted it to be me. I had a publicist pitching me everywhere. And we advertised. I advertised like crazy. And dentists in LA hated me. I don't care. Dude, I was broke. I grew up poor. I had nothing. I had nothing. I came from nothing. And I built it all on my own. You know, I had to pay my school loans back, not them. I was supporting my grandparents. I needed to make money. I didn't care if they didn't like me. I didn't do anything thing un unethical, but I advertised and I advertised and I advertised and I worked with a publicist and I got it. And then all of a sudden people are like, okay, well, yeah, maybe that's kind of cool. And then they're like, you know, coming by and they're observing like, well, how do you do this? And how do you, and I would show them. I, I mean, I'm not one of those guys that's like, oh no, I'm not going to tell you my secrets. I want you to know all my secrets. I want you to go out and do what I did, but do it even better. Look, I've had an amazing career. If anything I did in my career, my life, can be an impetus for you guys to do even more, I'm all about it. The first thing I tell dental students, and I lecture all over the world, I never charge a dental school or, or anything having to do with dental students, to come. I always do it for free. And the first thing I tell them, all of them, is I'm going to stand up here and tell you everything I did. I'm not bragging. 
I'm telling you this because I want you to copy it and do it better. If there's anything I did in my, and I'll tell you why, my career in dentistry exceeded every expectation I ever had. You know, follow me on Instagram. Not because I need followers. I don't need followers. I have a million followers. Follow me because I follow like 20 guys who are really good and I take all the good stuff they do and I put it in my Instagram. Follow me to learn from me. Not because I need followers. Mm -hmm. You know, come to LA and shadow me. Come in my practice. And don't be a dope and just sit there in the back playing games with your phone. Go and talk to the front office. Ask them questions. See what we do. Do you know every single patient that comes in my office before they walk in the door? Do you know what Sinet does? She Googles them. I don't watch Pretty Little Liars. The star of the show walks in. How would I know? Mm. I wouldn't. She tells me. Wow. That's being proactive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. So. Yeah. But there's a lot of things like that. And it's not just one thing. There's a lot of things like that. You know, you know what we did for the two months that we were closed with the whole COVID thing? I was on the phone with probably 20 to 30 dentists just finding out what we needed to do to open up our office again and be safe. You know, I spent that two months researching, you know, this week I'm getting a new device from BD. It's, it's, it's a, um, it's an antigen analyzer. So basically I can have a patient come in the office, swab their no nose, and in 15 minutes, I'll know if they're COVID positive or not. Wow. How about that? I'll be the first office in LA that has that. You know, and so I bought four machines so we can, because it takes 15 minutes to test somebody. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, we changed our whole lot. It took a pandemic to get me to wear scrubs. I've never worn <laughs> scrubs. <laughs> right. So can you talk a little bit more about uh, COVID and how it's kind of shaped your practice? Because have you seen any like, you know, drops in cosmetic dentistry? Because I know, uh, some successful practices uh, that have really profited during uh, and, and grown during COVID-19, they've kind of switched to like an emergency um, model, I guess you could say. How how's it affected you, Dr. Bill? Not at all. Our numbers are right where they were last year. I mean, we're doing everything. I mean, our patients are really, listen, you walk in my office, it looks different. You know, the spacing in the reception area. The first thing you do when you walk in, we, sat, we sanitize your hands, we take your cell phone from you, and we put it in a little plastic baggie and it's not allowed to come out. You know, We bring the patient into the room. We have air filters in all the rooms that's filtering the air. You know, When I'm working, I have this high-speed suction unit that goes over your mouth that basically sucks up all of the, you know, of the aerosol while I'm working. You know, I'm not wearing a, you know, an N95 or a KN9. I'm wearing a P100. Why? Because a K95 filters 20% of the air. An N95, sorry, a P, uh, an N95 does 95% of the air. And a P100 does 100% of the air. I look like freaking Darth Vader walking in there. You know, it's crazy. But, you know, we're doing it. And, you know, and my, I feel my staff, my staff is safe. My team is safe. I'm safe. My patients are safe. We take an extensive medical history on everybody. You know, if I'm, if, if we have any doubts, we send them home, you know? So, I mean, yeah, it's changed, but I'm doing huge cases right, left and center. Right. So, I mean, we really are thinking about what's the future going to be for, you know, everyone, right? And how's COVID going to change dentistry for everybody? So, we're, we, we talk a lot about what the future is going to be for us, for dental students, for dentists that just graduated. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, different paths getting right out of school? So like a lot of students either go to private practice, they become an associate, some will buy a practice right out of school, but then you'll see a lot of students going to corporate. So what are your thoughts on that? That's a big topic for us. Also residencies. Residency. Yeah. 
so let's start with residencies. I'm not a big supporter. You know, I mean, here's the thing. If you want to spend your career working in a VA hospital, then go do a residency at the VA hospital. Mm -hmm. That's not the kind of dentistry I want to do. Not that it's horrible. That's just not what fired me up about dentistry. So I wouldn't go do a residency program unless it's in something that you really, really are passionate about doing, number one. Number two, you know, going out and working for a big group like, you know, um, Heartland Dental, I mean, there are some great advantages. You know, I know Rick Workman. Um, I knew him when he first started Heartland. And they do a great job of training you, you know, and there are a lot of guys and gals, women, that like to go there and they love that environment. They love that structure. And, and that's great. There are a lot of dentists that go there and they get a lot of information. They learn how to run a practice. They learn, you know, the finances of running a practice. And then they take that and they open their own practices. That's great too. You know, um, for me, the, the path was, was really kind of uh, golden. You know, I, I knew I wanted to do cosmetics. I found two great cosmetic dentists that wanted an associate. They were nice enough to let me come in straight out of school. Um, now, granted, I had two years experience in Switzerland, so I was a little bit faster than somebody who just graduated. But I was able to really learn from these two men how to do dentistry, how to practice better. I'll tell you something. I worked with, with Stan Vogel. Stan Vogel was like the first big Hollywood dentist. And I didn't really learn cosmetics from Stan. I learned that at the AACD, which I highly recommend. If you want to do cosmetics, you should be a member of the AACD. But what I learned from Stan was how to talk to famous and rich people. Because I had never been around them before. Like, I grew up poor. I, you know, like, I didn't know movie stars. And, the, you know, I, like, I, it was really intimidating to me. You know, the first day I was in his, his office, like, I worked on three Academy Award winners. I mean, it was nuts. And it was like that day after day after day, like, the biggest people in Hollywood were his patients. And so what I really learned from him was how to move in a circle that I was not familiar with. So my recommendation to you as a dental student is introspectively sit down and think, what do you want? Where do you want to work? What kind of dentistry do you want to do? Then go out and shadow people that are doing that and see if that's really what you want to do. Maybe it isn't. Maybe you want to go into ortho or endo or pedo or perio. I mean, I don't know. One of the young men that I mentored for many years is a, is a young man named Sam Sarabi. And I don't know if you guys know who Sami is, but, you know, I helped him get into UOP dental school. He went and he did, his first job was, was working in, in Texas. He now has 30 dental practices in Texas called Rodeo Dental. And they're killing it. He's got more five-star, golden five-star Google reviews than Disneyland. I mean, <laughs> they're killing it. They're killing it. So, you know, there's a lot of different areas of dentistry to be successful in. You just need to kind of pick your niche. If I were starting over again, I would do it completely differently. My practice is a very unique kind of practice now. We've got it's a very high-end clientele, and it's really a cosmetic practice. That's what I do. Now, would I do that again? Probably not. I would probably set up a model where I could have maybe two or three different practices. I don't know, you know, but I love what I do. I've got my little kingdom where I go, and it's awesome for me. That's great. And Dr. Bill, we love that you're passionate about propelling other people forward because that's exactly what we're all about here and that's kind of you know why the foundation of this podcast is is that we want to learn too because we're hungry for that knowledge we're thirsty but we also love 
to share it with others so that we can create the best generation of dentistry possible. We've had, you know, somebody else uh, on our uh, podcast speak about, you know, previous dentists being this like cultivator of a campfire and leaving the campground even better than how you found it before. And uh, that's Dr. David Carter. Shout out to Dr. David Carter. And we love that concept of, you know, we learn from it. We can grasp what we can and make ourselves better, make the community better, and then make that field of dentistry even better than how we found it. And that's kind of, we love that you are so passionate about educating and then you're willing to take on, you know, dental students and have them shadow you and come in because also, you know, you are a celebrity. We, we heard your name, you know, oh my goodness, you know, we got an email from Dr. Bill, you know, that's amazing. You know what I mean? And, but the fact that you handle all of that with such humility and grace and that you're so willing to give back to the community and help, I think that's so admirable. And I respect you even more than anything else simply because of your humility. I love well, that. Thanks. Let me tell you, there's two groups I have never missed a meeting. And there are a lot of good groups in dentistry, but there's two groups I've never missed a meeting since I started practicing. One is the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. You have to understand, when I graduated dental school, they didn't have porcelain veneers. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. We barely had light cured composite. It was an A and B paste. So I learned cosmetic dentistry through the AACD. I became accredited and I'm one of the few fellows in the AACD. Number two is the Crown Council. The Crown Council of Dentists, you guys should all join it. You would love it. They have nothing about didactic dentistry at all. It's all about team building. It's all about motivating your team. It's all about self-help, self-improvement. And through the Crown Council, I'm in an amazing mastermind group of dentists. We meet every month in, uh, on the phone for one hour and then twice a year in person at a retreat. And I've been friends with these guys for 20 years. And it's like Nordstrom's best practices. We literally sit around and teach each other how to be the best that we can be. Mastermind groups are so incredibly powerful. I, this is one thing that I didn't even know would be as effective as it is that came out of my mastermind group. Three years ago, we did a little contest. And the contest was over the next three months, let's see who could get the most five-star Google reviews, right? Well, Sami won because he has 30 practices, <laughs> but I increased my, I'm up now at about 1,850 five-star Google reviews. Now, I didn't realize how that would impact my practice. Do you know what that does? It bumps you to the top of every search engine optimization algorithm out there. So if anybody's looking for a cosmetic dentist like this side of the Mississippi, who do you think they go to? You do. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing that we do. We all push each other to do better and better and share with each other, you know? So one of the cool things about the Crown Council, and I have no ownership or stake in it at all, is they'll put you in a group called the Young Dentist Group where you'll be in kind of a mastermind group of other young dentists to all help each other. It's phenomenal. You know, Greg and Steve Anderson are brothers. Um, out of, Greg's out of Utah, Steve's out of Dallas, and they put this together. I highly recommend it. Hey, I'm sold. Uh, I mean, I would love to be a, a fly on the wall in that mastermind, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I, I can't imagine the things that you would learn there. Especially from people, like you said, it's just the top dentists from, I don't know if it's, you know, just in the region or the country, but just- Yeah, the, well, I'll tell you, know. you, I'll tell you the guys in my mastermind group, Dennis Wells. I don't know if you know who Dennis is, you should have him on this. Dennis Wells is king of prepless veneers. Mm -hmm. He is the country version of me. He treats Dolly <laughs> and Reba and, He's in Nashville. We're best friends. We've been best friends for 28 years. He's an amazing man. Uh, Brian Harris, you should have him on here. Oh, yeah. Brian Harris practices out of Phoenix. Uh, his dad, Joe Harris, is my age and my friend. Brian started the virtual smile console and is killing it. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's knocked that ball so far out of the park. Sam Sarabi, I just told you, you know, 
he's not much older than you guys. He's got 30 practices, wow. you know, in, in the Dallas area, and they're killing it. Um, who else is in my group? Uh, Jeff Gray. Jeff Gray is down in San Diego. He is the implant king down there. Okay. He does all the all on fours. Uh, Steve Anderson. Steve Anderson isn't a dentist, but he's Greg's partner in Crown Council, and he has five dental practices in the Dallas area. Steve teaches TOPS. You've heard of TOPS in dentistry? That's Steve's program. He's incredibly successful. Um, who else is in our group? Um, Ed White. He has um, White Dental um, there in, uh, in Pennsylvania area. He's got four or five practices out there. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting. Oh, Guy Gross. Guy's got like four or five practices out in the Kansas area and does a bunch of implant courses and stuff. I mean, everybody in our group is just has these amazing careers. And, you know, we all share with each other and, you know, help each other's practices grow. That's just, it's so essential in my opinion, because you only know so much. And I, I want to say that, take it with a grain of salt, because obviously you've been doing this for so long, but you can always learn more. And just like how you had that mentality earlier on when you were talking about acting and just maybe some other adversity in your life where you always realize that, hey, like I'm at this point, but I can do better. And that's why you do exceed at your own expectations. So I, I love that being around the like-minded group people. I think that's such a healthy thing. That's kind of like what we try to do here. That's what we want to get from our viewers. We want them to go after those kinds of aspirations. So thank you for that, seriously. What I tell kids at LEAP, we've all heard the saying, birds of a feather flock together. Right. Be careful who you flock with. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. that. It's that 10 mentality you talked about. Surround yourself with 10s as well. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If you're trying to be a 10 and all your friends are twos, what do you think happens? You become a two. Your average pulls down. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You are who you are surrounded by, without a doubt. You're definitely influenced by them. Uh, Dr. Bill, I, I know you do have a podcast. Would you mind talking about that for a second? Yeah. So I started doing all these interviews for Leap. And the material in it, like these people were so amazing. You know, Anthony Hopkins and Mark Wahlberg and Kathy Bates and Fergie and, and Michael Strahan. So we started a podcast called Meet the Mentor and it exploded. I mean, we're number one in Yemen, number two in Finland, number three in <laughs> Iceland, and we're number 94th in a category of 47,000 in the U.S., that's and awesome. I'm just about to launch a new one with uh, Taylor Zachar Perez. He's the young man that stars in the new Netflix hit called um, The Kissing Booth. Uh, I also just interviewed Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. He'll be on in the next few weeks. Uh, I have an update with Paula Abdul. And an, uh, oh my God, Apollo Ono. Do I love this man? He. <laughs> the most decorated winter Olympian in history, right? He was in three Olympics. The last Olympic where he won the most medals for the last, for the two years prior to the Ad Olympics, he wouldn't take his ice skates off. Really? He wanted them to be part of his body. In a sport where the difference between a medal and a non-medal is that fast right think about it right when he won the last year he dropped his weight he's my height he's about 5 10 he dropped his weight to 140 pounds and wow. he could bench press 1500 pounds with his legs how about that I and you know what he said to me as he was walking out a leap we're getting off the stage. He puts his arm around me and goes, Doc, if I had a program like Leap growing up, I could have done so much more. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Gee. So, Dr. Bill, uh, could you talk about discus for us? That's like a whole, we should do another one of these. Literally, oh, discus awesome. is like a whole hour. 
Yeah. I mean, I'll give you the cliff notes. We started it with nothing. We had no customers, we were broke, and we had nothing. 20 years later, we did $1.3 billion in sales. We invented Zoom. We were the number one tooth whitening um, company in the world. And it was a, you think you've had happy endings? This was a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, now, seriously, we'll do another one of these because discus, I don't even want to rush through it. Mm -hmm. There's so much to discus. And I think it would be really great for dental students because you know what? You don't need to be a one trick pony. I use dentistry as a platform for everything in my life from TV to being a New York Times bestselling author to winning two Guinness World Book records to being knighted to this to that. I mean, it, it, l l let's just do more of these. Please. Absolutely. We're definitely looking forward to it for sure. So Dr. Bill, if you don't mind telling our listeners, how can everyone hear about more about you, uh, contact information, all of that sort of stuff? The easiest way to reach me, honestly, is through Instagram. I don't really Facebook or any of that other stuff, but I promise you, I answer every single DM, every single one. I don't have a team doing that. Now, I do have an Instagram team, but I answer all the DMs. Um, if you want to learn more about me, go on my website. It's drbilldorfman.com. And uh, there's a part in there that says media. In it, there's an EPK. EPK is an electronic press kit. Pretty much everything I've ever done that's noteworthy is in there. You can find it. Um, if you're in a dental school and, you know, once COVID passes and you guys want me to come out, I'll do it. If not, we could do it virtually. You know, that's the cool thing about COVID is, you know, prior to COVID, you know, if I was putting on a seminar and I wanted Usher to come and he's like, yeah, doc. I can't come in person, but I can do it virtually. People be like, I'm not gonna pay money to see somebody virtually. They don't say that anymore, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's super easy for me. The hard part is flying places, but I can, I can speak, you know, at any dental school in the world virtually. It's super easy, you know? So, That's just fair. hit me up. Right. Okay. So, Dr. Bill, thanks again so much. Guys, any last things you wanna say to Dr. Bill before he goes? We're looking forward to the next episode. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Dr. Bell, you're one of the most influential dentists we've ever talked to. Thanks again so much for uh, talking to us today and spending the time. My pleasure, Sam. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dental Student Vibes podcast with the celebrity dentist himself, Dr. Bill Dorfman. As always, follow us on Instagram at dental.student.vibes. Send us your comments, questions, concerns, whatever we can to make you the best dentist you can be and to make this the best podcast we can for you. So as always, stay safe and bye-bye.